Hey all you rehab specialists out there. Do you have an isokinetic dynamometer just sitting around your clinic not being used? Little known fact, isokinetic machines that aren't used regularly are at higher risk for bouts of sadness. Help your machine out and take CSMI's newest CEU course, Isokinetics 101 Online, created by me, Daniel Bodkin, and learn how to use all the exercise and testing applications available on your machine. With new and exciting rehab techniques in your toolbox, your sad isokinetic machine can become an active member of the rehab team again and regain its happiness. Isokinetics 101 Online by CSMI has been approved for eight credit hours for athletic trainers, physical therapists, and physical therapy assistants. Contact your state board for details on specific requirements. This course is available at humacnorm.com slash courses slash isokinetics 101. Hello, and welcome to the Everything PT Podcast with Matt Taylor and Daniel Bodkin. Please do not consider anything you hear to be medical advice. Just a couple of guys ranting about everything PT. Enjoy the show. Hello, everyone, and welcome again to the Everything PT podcast. Um, I am Matt Taylor with my co-host, Daniel Bodkin, and this is uh, episode number nine. And today we're going to be talking about financial management in the field of physical therapy. So, and Daniel, Matt, before, how, how you doing? I'm good, man. You know, and before we get started, I just want to give a shout out. The music that you hear at the beginning and end of every episode, it's actually uh, provided by my army buddy, Dave McCauley. Um, a great buddy up in Boston. We're really good friends. So he's allowing us to use that music. You can find him. The band name is uh, Sonic Red. The song we use is uh, called Aliens, but you can find him on Spotify, Apple Music, uh, YouTube, um, even on social media. Um, I think he's on Facebook and Instagram, all the regulars, but name is Dave McCauley or the band name is Sonic Red. So give him a check out. He's really into hard rock and I have a little bit of hard rock in me during like workouts, you know, I cycle between a little Wu-Tang, a little, uh, <laughs> some, you know, some hard rock every once in a while, I'll throw a little bit of a uh, punk in there. You never know what's going to happen, but he's, uh, influenced my, my music during workouts over the years. Hey, text me the name of that, uh, when you get a chance, cause I'll, I'll yeah. check him out in my, uh, our little workout class in the mornings here. Yeah. Awesome. For sure. But Daniel, so we, who do we, we have, have with us? Yeah, we have a guest, uh, a uh, dear friend of mine, Mr. Terrence McAllister, a financial advisor and uh, someone who's really advised me well uh, throughout the years I invest with, helped me with budgeting and uh, been, been kind enough to come on the show. So Terrence, how you doing, buddy? Doing great. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Awesome, man. So Terrence, uh, I might accidentally call you T-Mac as I have my entire life. So Makes but, sense. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Terrence, tell us a little bit about yourself and um, what you do, bud. Yeah, so uh, I guess you hit the nail on the head. We've been good friends for quite some time. Uh, but I grew up in West Virginia, uh, went to college and played some football at WNJ. Um, been a financial advisor for the last, I guess, 11 years. But married to a beautiful wife named Colby. And uh, we have two awesome little girls. Um, Ruby is three and a half. And Sydney will be one here in May, on May 14th. So... My life is quite active. <laughs> hey, I'm right there with you, man. I'm a dad. I'm a girl dad. I got a oh man, I got a three and a half, no, a four and a half, and a three year old. That's awesome. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, maybe we can trade some more stories after this. <laughs> I always thought I wanted boys until I had girls, and I watch all my friends with boys. So I'm glad Amen. I have two girls. We, I, I've found a very similar vibe being around all my friends with boys, but. Hey, I guess they'll come and talk to us on, in the teenage years. We'll see how that all Yeah, goes. see how you guys feel around age uh, 13 or so. Yeah. <laughs> all right, so Terrence, we're going to pick your brain. Um, talking about the world of physical therapy, salaries, trying to invest, all that stuff. And this is more for our, uh, if you're watching us on YouTube, you'll see the visual. If not, I'll try to give you a good little audio cue. I got to. Got to crack me open a beer for this one because this oh, stuff man. stresses me out. So I have Michelob Ultra in our fridge. 
clinic, I should go grab one. I got me a, and I've never had it before. It's an almond milk stout. Okay. Ooh. Yeah. Who makes it? This is a Sweetwater. Sweetwater. You want to be our next uh, sponsor? Where you got? So, <laughs> so TMAC, um, the overarching problem in therapy, and it's just, uh, it's really hindering us as a field. We're just having a hard time increasing therapy reimbursement, PT salaries. You know, if you, I'll take Pittsburgh, for example, if you're a new grad and you get, get a job in Pittsburgh, you're going to make $55,000 a year, you know, and folks like uh, with similar educations are getting twice that much when they come out of school. So we and the answer for us currently is we're working, you know, more hours. We're working later. We're working to six and seven. I've worked till seven o'clock, several times like scheduled to work till set which is bonkers to me therapy seven but that's that's where we are we're double and triple booking patients out of necessity not because we want to just because mm -hmm. to keep the doors open so we we need help with our finances because we're stressed so a uh, 30,000 foot view any good um good recommendations for managing debt you know if someone has just six figures of loans and um, fixed income when they come out of school. Yeah, I mean, it's successful principles. I mean, it, it's really no matter what you do, there's principles that you got to live by from the financial aspect. And it really just starts with the budget. You know, what I find with most of my clients is most people have no idea what comes in and what goes out on a monthly basis. And so we have these things called, you know, either credit cards or debit cards. We swipe and if there's something in the bank account, it's, it's all good. Um, we paid the bills, we made it to the next month. And the budget is really where it all starts. Uh, we can't, you know, I can't help any client unless they have a decent idea of what comes in and what goes out on a regular basis. And, and uh, a lot of times I, I take my clients through exercises where they look back at their, their you know, bank account over the last three months and see where they spent money. Because one of the things that they find is it's a death by a thousand paper cuts. We five and $10 ourselves to death. And so that's, that's where we really start is just getting a really good budget in place because if we don't know just the basics, what's coming in, what's going on on a regular basis, I can't help them develop a good strategy on you know, tackling that debt or saving for those goals that they're looking to save for um, until we know that. So that's, that's really where we start is, is the budget. You've got to know the budget. And it's not a bad word. I get a lot of clients who are like, oh, I don't need the budget. I, I make enough money or or whatever. Budget is not a bad word. It literally is just awareness of where your dollars and cents are going on, on a monthly basis. And so that's, that's the best place to start is, is understanding that part. So Terrence, I have two questions I want to throw yeah. at you. The first one is, you know, one of the biggest investments a lot of young people will make is buying a home versus renting. Right now, those costs are out of control but so are the costs of renting. And every time you pay money in rent, that's money that's not being invested into your home. So do you recommend that somebody just kind of sit, you know, maybe ex extend their, their rent for another six months or a year before they try getting into the housing market? Or should you just bite the bullet and, and get a house? Really depends on their situation. And I'm going to sound like an attorney on the, all these questions. It depends. I hate that. <laughs> but it, it really does. Um, in this market that we've had just recently, I actually did recommend to several clients like, hey, they, they could take advantage of the market and they sold their house really high. But the problem was from finding that next house, they were going to get probably less for the same amount. And so I did recommend several times last year in the last, I would say, two years to... Uh, hey, let's rent for a little while and see if this market will cool down or at least give yourself some patience. Take advantage of the hot market, get that high sale on that credit, that property that you currently have and then and sit and, and wait. Um, so yeah, there are times when it does make sense to, to, to ride that rent out a little, little bit longer. Okay. It's, it is a little bit tougher these days just because rent is increasing at such a high rate. And typically you can get a mortgage depending on what you're looking at and what market you're looking at a mortgage that is less than the rent. And then you're starting to build equity and, and building towards that asset. So I'll, I'll keep my, it depends answer. <laughs> but um, There are definitely arguments that can be made for both ways, yeah. just depend, depending on their situation. So luckily I'm a veteran. So I got to take advantage of that zero down yeah. uh, VA. Uh, how much do you recommend somebody put down as a percentage of their home? 
Cause you got it. That's money that you're having to save and not investing elsewhere. Yeah. So I'll give myself, for example, you know, my wife and I just moved um, to the Washington PA area in back in 2019. And, and I went with a lower down payment up front because there was some, there was just other goals that we were trying to accomplish. And your house really is, is the last thing you want to have paid off. And so I'm not going to put all my equity into my home when I have other things such as student loans, such as, you know, college and different things that are going to be coming up. Um, I can't get that money out of that asset until you know, without taking another loan and, and different things yeah. like that. So uh, again, it kind of depends on the situation, but your home is going to be the last debt that you take care of. So I don't, I'm not necessarily for throwing everything there first when you have other things going on. Is your mm -hmm. retirement max, you know, set up? Is your student loans, are your debts, other debts taken care of? If not, your home's the last thing you want to put all your money into yeah, especially right now. I know mortgage rates are low, yeah, but they're about to go up because inflation's high. So anytime inflation's high, they're going to start, um, you know, messing with those interest rates. So you know, it might actually be a good time to buy a home. Yeah, I mean, the, the interest rates no doubt have gone up faster than we've seen in the last like 10 years. We haven't seen an increase in interest mm -hmm. in, in quite some time. And it's funny, we've been at such low interest rates for so long that now that they're up at five, we're, we're all like, oh my gosh, they're, they're going crazy. But ask your parents, ask your grandparents what they paid on it, the interest of their first mortgage back when they bought their first house. Five is still not a bad rate. Um, it's just a no. lot higher than what we're used to over mm -hmm. the last few years here. Yeah, I took advantage. Uh, I think about a year ago, I refinanced all my student loans. We yeah. refinanced our house because it was historically low, like ridiculously low. So I guess Same. when it drops again, you just take advantage of it, right? Yeah, it's interest rates. Anytime you can use someone else's money for a pretty low cost, it's not a bad idea to do it. You know, there's there's good debt and there's bad debt. Um, and your home is one of those good debts. Student loans are the ones we don't like. You know, credit cards, those sorts of things. If we can get those taken care of, by utilizing uh, something like a home equity line of credit or a home equity loan or something along those lines, it's not a bad deal, um, especially because the interest rates are a lot better than what a you know a credit card or even some student loans are. So TMAC, you um you made mention to the fact that you shouldn't just throw everything at your loans. You know, it's probably wise to save something. That was one of my questions for you today. Um, basically, is you know, should we live like crazy people and eat pork and beans? All day, just drink nothing but water and maybe in our parents' uh, basement or garage. I don't know. We'll see what's available. Um, and just throw your, all of your money at the loans, you know, and get them done with and sacrifice that. Or should I, you know, this is what my gut tells me. Should I save some? Should I invest some for retirement and then really budget the rest and allocate a lot as much as I can towards the loan? But what are, what are your thoughts? I'm a balanced guy, yeah. you know, it's, it's one of those things where we could throw all of our money toward our student loans, but we all know that life happens and life happens no matter what we're doing or how we're doing it. And so we could be putting all that money towards those loans, but if life happens, we have to, if we don't, if we didn't set ourselves up with other savings, we're going back into debt. And so it, it's really good that, you know, successful financial planning is no different than building a house. So in the foundation, there's foundational pieces you have you, need to have set up such as a peace of mind fund we need to have cash on hand um, so that when life happens we're not swiping a credit card you know i think covid really shed some light on on that for a lot of people a lot of people were caught with their pants down not having any savings um, and they lost their job or they couldn't go to work due to due to covid and so having that peace of mind fund building that is is important um, having things like disability insurance and life insurance is really important because disability insurance, for instance, I mean, that's your, that's covering your income. So if you, if something happens to you and you can't go and earn an income, well, guess what? Your debt's not being taken care of and nothing's being taken care of at that point. So I don't think it makes sense to throw everything towards student loans and, and have big gaps in other areas of, of your foundational uh, pieces of your plan. Gotcha. Now you mentioned uh, disability insurance. Also, mm -hmm. the other thing you got to think about is life insurance. Yeah. Um, when I was in my twenties and my, my, uh, my father-in-law, he, he was a, an insurance agent. So that was one of the first things he actually made us buy <laughs> was he said, you need to get a life insurance policy. I'm like, why am I spending money on this? Well, now I'm, you know, I'm 41 now, 
if I had waited, it'd be more expensive because mm-hmm. I just crossed that 41 threshold. Um, do you recommend that people get a life insurance policy now while they're young? Or is it something that you can hold off on a few years? As soon as possible. It's based on your age and your health. We all know that we're getting older every year. There's no one, nothing stopping that. And our health is just not guaranteed. I mean, you guys know that better than anybody else. You know, you could be uh, as healthy as can be and then one thing, and that affects how much your life insurance could cost or if you can get it at all. So typically, the younger we are, uh, the healthier we are. So yeah, it makes sense 100% to get the life insurance as soon as possible, even if you don't own a home even if you're not married, even if you don't have kids, it still makes sense. Because if you're planning on doing any of those things, you're going to need it at some point. So just put it in place. Just because you get it earlier in life doesn't mean you're paying more. It doesn't work that way. Um, you're just paying less uh, uh, for that for that premium. So 100% it makes sense to have life insurance early. I mean, I do it on my, my girls um, have really nice uh, whole life insurance policies. And they have guaranteed insurability riders. So they, they'll never have to worry about protecting their family down the road because I've implemented those things already for them. This podcast is sponsored by CSMI, the maker of the Humac Norm Isokinetic System. Purchase a new or refurbished machine, or you can even upgrade an existing system to bring it up to date with all the latest testing and training applications. Please visit csmisolutions.com to view all of their available products, including the Humac Norm Isokinetic System, the Humac Balance Portable Computerized Balance System, and Sportswear Online. CSMI. Better data leads to better results. Looking for a way to improve sport-specific training with your athletes? Then you have to check out BlazePods. BlazePods is a neurocognitive reaction training intervention that can be incorporated into your sessions for patients throughout the treatment spectrum. Visit blazepod.com, enter code EVERYTHINGPT at checkout and save 15% off your order today. So DMAC, the question everyone wants to know, should we invest everything in Bitcoin? Well, that depends. No, absolutely not. Well, you should not invest all your money in any one area. That's uh, that would be a terrible thing to do. But um, yeah, I get those questions too. And it's funny, I get questions about Bitcoin and blockchain from clients of mine that hardly email and text. And I'm like, I'm not going to take the time to to explain this to you. You you send me an email or a text message first, and then we'll dive into that. (laughs) So on a on a more serious note, uh, 401k, 403b. Um, you know, so, and I know those are broken down in the stock market. Um, maybe going straight to the stock market and investing in uh, Tesla, Apple, whatever it is. Uh, any recommendations for, for that? Well, wherever you're working, if they offer a 43B, if you're in a hospital, if you're working for a, you know, a publicly traded company that have a 401k, that's going to be your best place to start for retirement savings. Most times today, companies are matching. So, you know, if they're giving you a three or a 5% match, I would say my recommendation always is at least give up to the match. If they're going to give you something, yeah. don't leave it on the table. Um, anything above and beyond that, well, then let's talk about what are some of your other goals, because keep in mind, those, those are retirement accounts. They're not to be accessed prior to 59 and a half. Um, there's a lot of, you know, there's penalties and, and taxes and things like that that go along. So up to the match, anything above and beyond, then we go back and say, hey, are we funding our peace of mind fund? What are we doing debt wise? What are some things you want to do prior to 59 and a half? I mean, come on. I'm sure there's some goals out there you want to accomplish prior to that, too. So that's that would be the 401k. All right, Terrence, it's going to throw a Star Wars reference at you. I'm flying solo like Han over here, right? I'm uh, self-employed. What are my options for 401k? Yeah, no, that's a good question. Matt and I have had that conversation just recently. Um, You know, for those business owners out there, depending on how many employees you have, will probably depend on what type of plan you look at. But, you know, you have 401k options that you could implement. Um, you, You have simple IRAs for smaller, if you have not as many employees. It might make sense to do a simple IRA. It has less costs involved. Um, but, you know, Matt and I were talking about, you know, it's, it's tough. As a business owner, you're getting things started. You know, any more 
extra out of the business. It's like, oh, I don't know if I want to do a match or things like that. And so you have to really come to, you know, for yourself to figure out w- w- what's going to be beneficial for me uh, first, because really that's, that's where, where it has to start. And then, okay, if this is going to benefit me, how is this going to benefit my employees as well? And so that that's where you could start if you don't go that route. You know, mm-hmm. you can always open a traditional IRA, you know. I, I started a solo K. Okay. Yeah. I hope that was a good idea. Solo Ks are, are good too. I mean, it's 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 exactly that. It's it's a 401k for a sole prop, you know. Um, and so you get basically all the advantages that a 401k offers. Um, you just don't have to offer it to, to everybody. Yeah. All right. So you and I both got two little girls, right? Yeah. Um, can you remind me, what is the... The college saving plan that you can get for your kids. What is that called? That is called a 529 plan. All right. How does that work? So 529 plan is uh, basically an investment account that you can save in for education. And it's it, the money that goes in is after tax. It grows tax deferred. But when you pull the money out for college education, it's tax free. So all that growth you can utilize um, and not pay taxes on it. So that's the advantage of it. Um, mm-hmm. 529 plans have come a long way. Um, they used to be very restricted. Um, I wasn't a huge fan, but they've changed a lot in the last really five years. You can mm-hmm. use them now for K through 12 private education. Um, you can, you know, the big knock was, hey, if my kid got a full ride scholarship, you know, how do I get that money out? Now there's ways that you can get the money out without penalty if your kid is, mm-hmm. you know, D1 and you're going, you know, whatever it is, athletics or, mm-hmm. or academics. Um, so they, they made a lot of changes, but it's flexible. You can set it up where it's a systematic savings plan every month or, mm-hmm. hey, grandma and grandma give some money and I'm gonna throw it in there. So okay. it's a good place. I did not know that. Um, just one thing I never realized before I had kids, daycare is expensive, man. Super. I mean, I'm paying three grand a month. It's, and it's actually not a terrible rate here in Atlanta. I'm paying wow. fifteen hundred a month for both kids, right? Wow. My oldest starts uh, starts kindergarten next this summer. Um, you think about that fifteen hundred a month for her over twelve months. That's almost a salary. Yeah. And then when the other one, thank goodness, she's three and a half because she only has a couple more years. But you know, some people say, okay, do I go private school? A lot of my neighbors or friends are talking about that. I'm like, you know, what? I'm looking forward to getting that three thousand dollars back a month. Cause I want to drop that money in other things. Yeah. No bulk discounts for daycare. No, <laughs> no. <laughs> Everyone's special, Daniel. Yeah. That's what I thought. doesn't work that way. Yeah, man. Daycare. It's, it's wild. I remember uh, before I had children doing some research and um, it said on average to raise a child from zero to 17 before college. Um, and mind you, this is probably almost 10 years ago. It was $275,000 per child. That's what it would cost to raise a child from zero to seven mm-hmm. years, not including college. Yelzers. <laughs> yeah. And you got to think about other things too, right? Um, you know, saving for two weddings. Yeah. Um, oh. You know, my girls, they're Jewish. So I have to throw two bat mitzvahs yeah. and those are crazy expenses. So that's something like I'm going to have big bills in about, you know, 10 years or so for those plus you know, all their other activities that they're going to get into plus their college, plus their weddings. So, um, you know, nothing, something I never thought of before having kids. Yeah. You know, Matt and I've been talking about that. I said, once you cross that threshold, man, you can't go back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're expensive endeavor. Alan's not uh, pregnant, but we're, we we're rounding the corner and getting ready for that. So you guys are really exciting me about (laughs) <laughs> just hope hopefully you get girls man girls are the best I agree. <laughs> so um, maybe um maybe one or two other questions t max so like just some something that i have seen and just like observing some people who really manage their money well um not that they're necessarily wealthy but they've handled their debt well they've got out of debt quickly they seem to live way beneath their means like whatever it is they have figured out to passively i call it passively saving i'm not smart enough to think of anything else but so on just a regular operating basis they are twice as far beneath their budget as the the person just because they're not using all of their 
-hmm. their monthly income. Does that make any sense? Yeah, I mean, you 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 said the per, the right word, budget. Oh, cool, budget. budget. Yeah. That's why that they're that's why they're able to do what they do, because they that individual whoever those people are those individuals that my clients that do the best, they know their money. You know they like, and I'm goofy, so I'm still old school. I do a check registry, like I'm looking at the d dollars and cents. And look, I'm guilty on everything that anybody else has done. Believe me. I graduated with six figures of debt, you know, from WJ. I had a mortgage with no keys, you know, and I started the business, <laughs> you know, and so it was like no income in the beginning. So I, I feel that. And where how we got out of that was number one, budget. Yeah. And when you it's it's just habits, right? It's just like any a lot of things that you guys teach your your patients, like it's developing good habits. And no matter how much money you make or don't make, if you instill those habits early. As your income rises, those habits never change. That's true. And, and so it's it's really important to get on that early and, and develop those habits. And then you will be like those individuals that you're talking about, you know, no debt. They still live below their means because they just because they got a raise, they didn't go out and buy the next best thing. You know, that right. it's just tough in our in the world today, right? I mean, that's what society talks about you know we've always heard growing up that keeping up with the joneses what's well, it's like times 10 these days it's, it's, um, yeah yeah it's worse so. now more than ever keeping um, up with the taylors yeah the Taylor. <laughs> <laughs> you'll have to go very far daniel <laughs> but um uh next question t Mac. so say that um someone is in six figures of debt you know we, we love our, our therapy students and there <laughs> a couple of them are listening out there what is step one? Because this is, this is daunting. This is a big, mm -hmm. this is something big on the shoulders of our, our field right now. So where do, where do we even start? You think just starting with the budget or what are your thoughts? Yeah, we start with the budget and yeah. we lay it all out. You know, where are all the, the loans at? You know, a lot of times what we'll do is kind of do a, a, a debt consultation with them to say, okay, here's where it's at. And if they're new, maybe they've not even done any consolidation. Like, so we go through those types of things with them to help them get things all in, in one, one area, maybe get better interest rates by consolidating. Um, and then, you know, depending on where they work, a lot of times we'll go over some of the, there are some debt forgiveness things that are out there. I just caution on that because it's that there's a lot of I's and T's you got to cross for those types of things. And, you know, there's always, we always get the question on, well, what if the government takes that away? So we do tread lightly there because we don't have control over some of that stuff. Yeah. Um, but it is starting with the budget, listen, what out, what is all there? What, again, what's coming in, what's going out and then developing a strategy to, to hammer it out. And then, you know, my job is, you know, there's numbers obviously, but my job is really to, to manage expectations and uh, emotions. And so that's, really what I do as a financial advisor is, is help you manage those type of things and understand that it's not going to happen overnight. Um, yeah. This is going to be a little bit of a journey, but it's going to happen. And look, at the end of this day, at the end of this journey, when that's all done, like Daniel was talking about, man, to have that $3,000 a month back, look where we're going to be going after that. And it's, uh, and so we're able to kind of project that out just to show them, Hey, it's tough when you're doing it day in, day out, and you look at the, the amount, and it's like, I feel like it's gone nowhere. Um, so we're able to kind of project out and say, hey, this is what it's going, this is what we're doing, why we're doing this each and every day. Here's the, the end result, if you will. Yeah. All That's right, so. Terrence, where can people find you? Yeah, so, I mean, link. you can always find me on LinkedIn. Um, my email is T McAllister at financialguide.com. Hopefully you guys can put that out there. Um, yeah, we'll put so, them in the description for the episodes. Cool. Um, but yeah, I'm located in Pittsburgh, but I actually have, I have clients all over the nation as far as state of Washington and California, all the way down to Florida, up to Maine. So uh, Zoom is a beautiful thing. And so I can work with basically anybody anywhere, uh, which is pretty cool. And uh, so yeah, find me on LinkedIn. That's probably the easiest. Very cool. T-Mac, thank you for coming on with us, man, and uh, shedding any light on this issue. would be it, it has been very helpful, too. Even just to review it for me is, is good, too. So thanks, buddy. Yeah, no problem. I'll 
I enjoy it. I like educating. So uh, questions are always encouraged too. Yeah. All right. So uh, check out Terrence McAllister. Um, we'll we'll uh, put the link in the show notes and uh, we will catch you guys next week. Thank you.